Okay, we're going to be cutting out a Scrabble piece today. The material I'm using is a five and a half inch wide um, cedar um, fence post board. Um, this works particularly well. It's cheap, easy to work with. Um, what I do is I have it screwed down to my have it screwed down to my CNC table. Um, I cut it a little channel that the board fits in, so it perfectly matches the matches the movement of the of the gantry back and forth so it's straight. Let's set our XY datum position for this. It's going to be in the lower left hand corner of the piece. Um, I'm just going to jog the router over to the about the X and Y and drop it down to about about the corner where I think it's going to be. Um, it doesn't have to be super precise on this particular project but it needs to be in the lower left hand corner so let's do that. <laughs> I have a big knot hole in the in the board right there, so I just want to want to be just to just to the right of the knot hole, so we're not cutting anything out. I drop it down just a little, just so I know kind of where I am. I'm going to change bits before we start cutting, but I just want to get a general idea where I'm at with this. Okay, we are on the board. And lower left hand corner of the board. Can you see that? Okay, so that's where I'm going to set my X and Y position. You do that in Mach 3, you come over here, you see where it says 0x, 0y, 0z. I'm just going to click, click the 0x button. That sets, that sets the X position, the X home position of the router. So when the program gets done, it's going to go back to that X position. I'm also going to do that with the Y. I'm not going to set the Z yet until I change bits. Um, what you do is you change the bit in the router, and then you then you zero it to the height of the board, and that, now it, then the router knows where the top of the board is. Okay, so the next part is we're going to change bits. I'm going to be using a um, half-inch V-bit to do the initial carving. So, let's go back to here. Okay. First step is raising up the router so that I can take the other bit out. Um, I'm going to raise the router up. Um, the jaw control on that is shift page up. That moves it up a bunch. Okay. You want to move it up a couple of inches so, so that the router bit will clear when you pull it out. Okay. Now, okay. So with the spanner, we're gonna on this router. There's a button that locks the locks the bit, so you can take it out. So you you push the button in with your thumb. You push the button in with your thumb, and then you rotate this until the button goes all the way in. Once the button's all the way in, you hold it while you're changing the bit. Then you just put the spanner in, turn it towards the gantry. That'll that'll loosen the bit up. Then you can spin it with your fingers a little bit. And turn until the bit drops out. Now I'm going to be using a uh, half inch bit here. You see it? Okay, we're going to be using the, the half inch V bit for the for the main carving on this piece. So we do the same thing. We we push the button all the way in. We slide the bit up, and then I roll my hand around so I can hold the bit in while I am adjusting it with the spanner. So you just go in and spin it around until it's tight and usually has to go around a couple times. Now the bit is in, I can let go of it. Just do it until it's tight. Okay. Can I see the bit now? Maybe not. Okay. Now I'm going to drop the thing, drop the camera down so you can see how we center the how we uh, set the Z height of the bit. Okay, now the next part is we get the probe out. We get the probe. Is the probe? This is a. This part hooks under the hooks under the router right there, on the nut. The next piece lays on the wood. And what we do is we lower it down. We lower the bit down until it touches the, until it touches the uh, the Z plate, and then it sets the height of where the wood is. Okay, now to do that, there's a button. 
in Mach 3, it is, is over here. See, it says Auto Tool Zero. I click that button and then the router starts moving down. And we're going to do that. You have to do that every bit change. Okay, you're not going to see me click the button, but I'm going to click the button. So I hold the I hold the the touch plate underneath the router bit, so when the router bit comes in, it hits the touch plate, and then I hit the button. See, it lowers down until it touches it. Now the bit height is set. Now the next step is loading in your Mach 3 code. You do that by going over here to Mach 3. Okay, you see where it says load G code? Yeah, right there. You click load that. Um, in this case, I'm going to be move. I'm going to be using the. Um, where is it at? Number two, zero zero two Scrabble letter V curve. Dot tap. G code G code files are in dot tap format typically. So I'm going to load that in. Okay, it's loaded in. Now, in Mach 3, it shows the it shows the letter there. I'm going to click Regenerate Tool Pass so we can see it better. There. That's what it's going to look like. What it's going to do is it's going to wrap down about five hundredths of an inch down in, um, and it's going to cut cut the inside of the letter. It's going to cut the number next to the letter, and it's going to cut a bevel around the uh, around the letter. Now. We have the router set. The router knows where where the board is. The height of the bit is set. We have the the file loaded. Now all we have to do is turn the router on, and then click the cycle start button. It's the big green button right there, and that will start that will start the code working. Once it starts doing that, it'll start cutting. So here we go. Oh, before you do that. Put on a pair of uh, ear protectors because the router is extremely loud. Okay, I have my ear protectors on. Here we go. Turn the router on. There it is. You hit the cycle start button. And the router starts going.
And the center can turn off the router, obviously. When the router finishes the program, it goes back to the start position. So that's the same position the next uh, router bit's going to start from. Now, the, it's time to change bits. We're going to change to the cutout bit that's going to cut the piece out. So I'm going to raise up the router and then I'm going to hold the button down using the spanner, um, loosen the bit, take the bit out, put the other bit back in, and then we'll load up a new uh, set of G-code to cut the piece out and then we start it and run it. So here we go. First step is raising the router a bit up. We're going to do shift page up to do that. It needs to go up a little higher because the, the other bit's a lot longer than this 90 degree bit is. Now we spin the thing around until the until the button engages. We can push the button all the way in. You have to have the button all the way in or else you can't change the bit. And then we just grab it with the spanner and turn it. I loosen it once and spin it around a couple times with my finger. It's faster than doing it with the, the spanner. Okay. Now I'm cutting it out with a a two flute a two flute upcut bit. I believe this is an upcut bit. It's either an upcut or a down down cut. And then it's holding the button again, in again, and then spinning it to lock it in. Okay, now it's in place. Now that we have it locked in place, it's vital that we set the height of the router again. So we get the probe. Get the probe. Let's get the probe. Okay. And we connect the probe to the router bit. We put the thing underneath. And then we press the auto zero tool button. I showed you that earlier. I'm not going to show it to you again. And then click the button. The router goes down. Once it touches, it's done. Okay. Now this board is half an inch thick. I have the cutout pass set to cut 0.6 inches down, so it cuts a little bit through the board um, into the spoiler board. That way it cuts all the way through the board. Um, these fence posts vary in thickness a little bit, so sometimes when you cut something out and it doesn't cut all the way down, you, you, set the, you go back to the, your Z0 position, drop it down a little bit, and then you try it again. So, Okay, so now the next part is to load the next piece of G-code. We're going over here. We're going to click the load G-code button. Load G-code. Now the G-code we're going to load is it's a 002 Scrabble letter cutout. It's down there. Okay. Okay, it's loaded. Now, when you when you load the code in, it shows you the code in the box where it's gonna where it starts at. That's the code right there. As the code is run, you'll see this you'll see this display scroll up to show whatever it's setting it to do. Now, if everything works out fine, the router is back to X zero Y zero that we had set before. So it's exactly the same X and Y position as the old the last bit. Um, the only difference is now the Z position is different because we have a different bit in it. Now what we need to do is just turn on the router and start the code. You press the the green cycle start button right there, and that starts the starts the router moving. So you have to have the router turned on and running before you hit that button, or else it's bad. You don't want it to be bad. So this is going to cut in three passes. It's going to go around. And then a little, then go down a little deeper and go around, and it's going to go down a little deeper and then go around. On the last pass, it's going to be cutting through. I'm going to be holding the piece down with my fingers because I don't have any tabs or anything set on this piece because it's the same width as the board and it's it shouldn't go anywhere. So anyway, let's do it. Let's uh, zoom into the size and righteous. Thank you. 
75 inches a minute here. In the last pass, I'm going to hold it down. And there is your scrabble piece. Okay. It's not done yet, but it's done cutting. Now what we have to do is we need to sand the edges down because this board is really rough. We're going to sand the edges. We're going to sand the edges all the way around, and then we're going to um, paint it. I'm going to use a marsh spray ink to. Uh, to, to color the, the the letter inside. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray the whole spray around the whole surface, and then we're just going to sand it off because we have to sand the top of the, the board anyway. So we're just going to sand sand the uh, the ink away that's on the on the top part, leaving the ink inside, which is what you want. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the piece all the way around on my sanding mop. It's over there. You can see it. I'll bring the camera over there to it. And basically, it's a it's a big mop full of little sanding. Each one of those little threads is a piece of sandpaper, and it goes all willy-nilly in all directions. It leaves a really good finish on the, on the sides and the back. So we're going to go over there. Okay, here we go on the sanding mop. It's, uh, I think, a 180-grit sanding mop. Let it go. Okay, and we're done sanding the edges. I sanded, just sanded the back a little bit so it isn't quite as rough. Okay, now notice the top and the bottom are really are still really rough. We're gonna we're gonna sand those down after we spray it with the ink. Okay, I use marsh spray ink. It works really well for this kind of stuff. It doesn't sink into the wood too much, and uh, it sands off pretty easily. It's a lot better than paint. Just gotta shake it up. What we're going to do is I'm going to spray all the way around the edge. I'm going to put a black edge around it, and then I'm going to spray the spray the letter inside. Then we're going to let it dry, and then we're going to sand it off. I'm going to spray the edge first. Okay, now I'm just gonna just gonna spray the inside of the letter just a little bit. Just a few little little poofs to get it black. You don't have to puddle it. You, know? you don't have to put a lot on it. You're just trying to trying to get coverage over the inside of the letter. There we go. That looks good. Okay, and we're just gonna put it in a warm place now and. Let it dry and then we'll sand it, sand it all off. So stay tuned. Here is the letter. It's dry and needs to be sanded because we got the got a little bit of black on the back and we got a little bit of. We're gonna take away all the all the black that's on the front except for the inside of the letters. So we're just going to the belt sander and I'm just gonna gonna sand that down and I'll be right back. Use a 40 grit, something quick and easy. I'm going to sand against the grain. Oh, 
Okay. That's good. Now we're going to sand with the grain on the uh, with the grain on the top. I'm just going to use the the 40 grit just to get most of the uh, to get most of the ink off, and then we'll we'll switch to 120 grit to do the finished sand on it. That was quick. Now we're just going to get the switch to the 120 grit and finish it off. And that's it. Let's uh, blow it off and see what it looks like. There you go. F. It's a value of four.